We thank you for your support, and we thank you for finding us in the DC 12 Clubhouse. I'm Dave Johnson. I'm so pleased to be joined by Chandler Hutchison and Daniel Gafford, just coming over to the Washington Wizards. Already, we had people tweeting out, when can I buy a Daniel Gafford jersey? When can I buy a Chandler Hutchison jersey? Those first couple of home games uh, it just made such a, a splash and impact on the Wizards fans. And again, we appreciate you so much taking the time out because I know it's part of a six-game road trip as, as we have this discussion here. I, I just want, I know that the burning question that everybody wants to know, uh, we'll start with you, Daniel, is just how you, how you doing? Because uh, you electrified us so much and, and we felt so bad when you, you suffered an ankle injury. So how are you feeling? I mean, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm just really just taking it one day at a time, not really trying to, you know, rush back into things. Just really just trying to get, you know, both my feet back up under me. But other than that, I'm doing good. I mean, I love the city of Washington. I love the team. I love the staff. I mean, I just can't wait to be back out there on the floor with everyone. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll start with you and then go on to Chandler, continue with that line of thinking. You, you, you love Washington and, and just, just your thoughts on, on being with a new team is uh, a lot of emotions, no doubt, finding out a, a trade in the middle of a season. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was tough, but I mean, I understand the fact that, you know, this is a business, so you got to really just, really just respect that aspect of it. So, you know, you never know when, you know, your number's going to be called and when your number's going to be up. So, my, <laughs> mine, and, you know, mine was called at that point in time. So, I'm here now. All right, Chandler, and what about your, your thoughts on, uh, on a new team as uh, we welcome you to the Washington Wizards? Yeah, I mean, just um, you always look for – I mean, one thing you, you prioritize in this league is opportunity, you know, and I think me and Gaff are both – having a huge opportunity with, with uh, the Wizards, you know, so just looking forward positively um, and obviously to be able to play with guys like, you know, Brad Beal and, and Russell Westbrook, two all-stars, a, a former MVP and Russ, you know, things that you haven't been able to experience and that not a lot of guys get to experience at this level. So really just blessed to kind of be in this opportunity. You, you mentioned Russ and Brad, as we, we appreciate the questions from our members of the DC 12 uh, clubhouse or uh, DC 12 club members that have submitted great questions. Again, we thank them for their support. A lot of it is asking about, uh, Chandler, I want you to pick up on this. Both of you have talked about uh, the welcoming culture to the Wizards. Can, can you give an example of that? Yeah, I mean, just initially, right when we walked in the first day, you know, Russ grabbing me and, and, uh, and Daniel just, you know, introducing himself and um, taking his time to kind of just ask us how, how we're doing, knowing that everything can be crazy, you know, the, with the quick turnaround in 24 hours, you know, from one city to the next. But really, it's been like that from everyone, not just Russ, you know, staff, uh, players, you know, coach, coaches, they've been great. And it's been a real easy transition in a situation that's kind of unfamiliar, you know, for our first time being traded. But it's been pretty seamless, you know, and, and just uh, we're just trying to find a groove here. Obviously, Daniel's trying to get back from an unfortunate injury, but um, just plugging along and trying to do what we can to help. And your thoughts, Daniel, uh, about that, that welcoming uh, culture? Because I think everybody watching this has, has started a new job at some point in their life and uh, a little tension there. You're like, all right, you know, how am I going to be accepted? Yeah, I mean, the welcome was just really just warm and with open arms. Yeah, we came in, we the team welcomed us, like, you know, off rip. We all we got um, well acquainted with uh, a lot of guys from the team that was walking past us and stuff throughout the time before the practice that we had watched. And Russ pulled us to the side, he talked to us, certain things like that. He just gave us advice and certain things like that. So he was basically being like a big brother to us. So, I mean, the welcome was great. We got welcomed to the, into the city, great. We got welcomed to the team, great. I mean, you know, it was just, it was just, you know, I liked it a lot. <laughs> but, you know, and two amazing leaders on the Wizards and, and a Russell Westbrook and, and a Bradley Beal. And Daniel, I'll start with you and go to you, Chandler, just – can you just talk about their leadership styles? Because they're different people. Yeah, I mean, um, I would say Russ could be more, a little bit more, you know, intense than Brad. But, I mean, just Russ showing that type of aggressiveness and whatnot with his leadership and stuff, that's something I would say would be real good for a thing like this. Because, you know, you know, there's some guys that don't – then I would say – there's some guys that could take it and some guys that couldn't. But, I mean, we got two different kind of, like, leaders on the team. Russ is the aggressive one, I would say. Brad would be kind of like the laid-back leader and whatnot. So, you know, just having those two types of leaders uh, – just having those two types of leaders on the team is real good for us because, you know, we have that leadership feeling on the team for more than just one person on the team, if that makes sense. And yeah, it does make sense, and, and more than actually those two. But the question was specifically about those those two. And Chandler, your your take and experience uh, so far with with uh, two such incredible uh, players and and also leaders. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I mean, I haven't got to 
be on the court with Brad yet. Um, you know, he went down with that hip injury and I was still getting acclimated, didn't quite get on the court with him yet. But, you know, just from Russ's, uh, my experience with Russ so far out there is he's real vocal. As you guys know, he's real intense, you know, as competitive as it gets. And when you get a guy that's, um, you know, really like the best player out there, but also the hardest worker and, and plays the hardest, then that makes you want to raise your level, you know, and meet him up and meet him to the level that he's at. And so just him leading by example is, is real easy for us to just follow suit, you know, because he's the being the head of the snake out there and, and, and setting that example for us. And, and the thing about uh, certainly you've experienced with Russ, uh, you make the cut. He'll find you. And, and that's one thing we talked about in, in our first broadcast with you as a wizard. Uh, your sense, Chandler, it, uh, it's just basketball IQ or whatever it is of making cuts at the right time and reading the game. Where, where does that, that come from? Because that's, that's a unique skill. Yeah, I mean, well, I've been, I've been in all different situations playing uh, basketball. You know, I've, I've had the ball in my hands and been relied to to be the guy that's going to, you know, have to score the majority of the points. But I've also been a guy who has had to be a role player and kind of find and pick his spots, you know. So I think um, it just allowed me to kind of be like a well-rounded player, not just ball dominant but also being able to move off the ball. And with Russ, I mean, he just makes it easy. You know, if, if, if 30 assists are available for him to get, then he'll get 30 assists. And, you know, that's something that not a lot of superstars in this league are willing to do. So for me, I just, I mean, I try to make it easy on him, but he, he makes it real easy on me. And, and uh, I just try to be in those positions to, to help him out when, you know, he draws so much attention. So it, it, he, if he's got two, three guys on him, it's a wide open lane. Just want to make myself available to, to help that team, you know, take some pressure off. And Daniel, uh, some questions here from our, our DC 12 club members is along those same lines as, as Scott Brooks has mentioned, they could even throw you a bad pass and you'll go get it way up in the air and, and bring it down for a slam dunker. Uh, what is it about your air, aerial game, if you will? Uh, and what, what is that like? Because not everyone can do that. I mean, it's just really just coming out and doing my job. Um, really, I mean, <laughs> I was blessed with just having like you know crazy athleticism out of nowhere. It came, it came to me out of nowhere. Just being able to jump like this could really, you know, be good for me at one point in time in my life. So just being on a team with a guy like Russ and a guy like Bradley Bill and just you know certain guys like them, um, it it really just takes me back to like my high school days. I had point guards and whatnot that would always throw it up as high as they could, and I just go up there and get it. So. I mean, it really wasn't um, anything really special to it. I was just really just going out and doing my job and doing basically what I was good at, you know, and just doing it at an elite level. And I always, you know, died. like Russ, he had told me, like, the first time, like, the first game that we had played, he was like, he was, like, in transition, he told me he was doing, like, ball screen in transition. And if he gets it in the post, just be ready because my man is going to help all the time. And I told him, like, I even told, like, um, like the media, the last interview did, you can throw it up to the moon. I'm going to bring it back to earth. So <laughs> that's just my thing. I just go out and I just do my part for sure. Um, and Russ, I mean, he just said, come out with energy and just play my game. Simple as that. And, and I'll get to both of you. This is a question from one of our DC club members. And it's great to get perspective. You guys come in from a different perspective, not being with the team. And, and you played against this Wizards team. So what's, what's your take on, we've talked a lot about Bradley and, and Russell, but the, the take on the entire team, and, and I'll start with you, Daniel, how do you see your, your role with the team? Um, me just really just coming in and being the energy guy, you know, um, just really putting like that big defensive aspect on the game, trying to go out and block shots, you know, alter shots, just being that defensive anchor that, um, you know, they just told me to come to be, so just really just out there talking, being vocal, catching lob dunks, you know, grabbing rebounds, basically just going out and doing my job and just being the energy guy and just making sure the team has the energy that we need to be able to just, you know, finish throughout the games that we're playing, so things like that. And Channel, along those lines, again, you, you played against the Wizards, knew some about the Wizards, but, but what's your take now that you're experiencing life as a Wizard? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think one of the things that um, they were – interested and they saw with the um, chance and opportunity to trade for us, me and Gaff was just that defensive versatility and, you know, length and athleticism. And I think defensively is the first thing uh, for me and Gaff that we that we can make that impact, you know, for him being a big guy, being able to go up and block shots and alter shots and, and then rebound, like you mentioned. And for me, you know, guarding, you know, really one through four out there on the court, 
and being able to switch on and, and guard some of the best players in the league, you know, I, and try to make it challenging for them, I feel like could be my calling too to just make an impact right away. And for us, I know, you know, the, the rhythm and where we kind of fit in offensively and things like that is going to come with time um, as we figure out, you know, as the team figures out, you know, our spots on the floor and as we figure out where we're going to fit in and things like that. But just that Im immediate defensive impact is definitely something where we see we can make that, make that jump and help the team. And Chandler, you just hit the nail on the head. It, it, it's, it's pretty crazy when you think about the NBA of today where if you can guard – four positions that's that's part of the deal now which that wasn't always the case yeah yeah I mean it's just it's all about versatility now you know you used to you look at a team uh, maybe 10 15 years ago and it was you really needed to have a guy that was you know a point guard a pure point guard then you needed to have a shooting guard then you needed to have you know a small forward power forward and a center a real um, bang down low center but the thing is now if you can get two or three guys that can play the one that can play the two that can play the three or even that can play the four, you're going to be better off in more of a, you know, switching scheme on defense, but also just being more versatile and hard to guard on offense. And Daniel, same thing for you, the, the center position, the athletic center now mm. is uh, your, uh, your skill set is, is what this league is all about right now. You can't just be a stay at home center typically. Yeah. I mean, really just being able to, disrupt as much as you can on the defensive end to help the team out. That's basically what I'm going to do. Um, just really just putting that aspect on it. I try to have, you know, a defensive mindset as much as I possibly can, especially when it comes to, you know, guys attacking me in the paint or anything like that. You know, I always got to protect home. And that's one thing I'm for sure trying my best to do is protect home. <laughs> We're visiting with Daniel Gabbard, Chandler Hutchinson. We appreciate so much their time. And your support uh, in the D DC 12 club and our, we're in the DC 12 clubhouse and some more hard hitting questions for your uh, guys. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll start with you, Daniel, and go to you, Chandler. Uh, who has been the funniest teammate since you arrived in DC? Oh, have you noticed? What have you noticed? Oh, the funniest, I would say, uh, Cassius from uh, Michigan state. Right. Oh yeah. He's, he's a pretty funny guy. We were just talking about like the stuff, um, the pictures in the hotel, it's like pictures in the hotel, it's like art or whatnot, but it's like of people. And, you know, that's kind of creepy. So <laughs> yeah. uh, he was talking about how he was, he had kind of like took it off the wall and set it to the side. I told him I took it off the wall and put it in the closet that's in here <laughs> and whatnot. But yeah, he's a, he's a real funny guy. And I, that's one of the things that stuck out. Like he, he cracks jokes and said, uh, certain things like that. So he's the funniest to me for sure. I know exactly what you're talking about at a hotel. You're going to say, did I just see the eyes move on that picture? You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, <laughs> yeah. not so sure. Not that I believe in ghosts or anything. Uh, okay. Chandler, who's, who's, uh, who's been the funniest for you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would definitely have to say probably Cassius too. His name came to mind right away. Um, second was kind of like Russ. I just said, and I just thought Russ because, you know, he, he's a guy that wears his emotions on his sleeve and, you know, he'll say whatever comes to his mind. You know, so it's there's a there's definitely a, a comical aspect to that. He doesn't really care. You know, he's just gonna say it and you know go with the flow. But Cassius is definitely one that likes to keep the humor around. You know, keep us all laid back. Um, you know, crack jokes, and we're just always having a good time. All right, back to you, Daniel. Uh, again, I look forward to you spending some time in the city as we just acquired you in a trade now send you out on the road for three months or whatever this road trip is that you're on. But what do you look forward most to seeing in D.C. or doing in D.C.? We're just getting around and um, I would say sightseeing and stuff. Um, I want to go to like the memorials and things like that with like um, my girl and stuff just to be able to see all that stuff or whatnot. Um, but that really, I'm just pretty much a laid back guy. I stay in the house most of the time. But when I get out, I want to go to all the restaurants and stuff that they tell me about. Anything like that. said, D.C. is a great city when everything opens back up. So I'm really want to experience that. So once that happens, you know, I'm going to be walking around and stuff, see what the city is like for sure. Yeah, this is a special place. Chandler, anything on your to-do list? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, going from – going kind of blessed going from Chicago to, to a city like D.C., um, you know, and, and to be able to be in such a historical city. Uh, you know, I, I hadn't really – I mean, I hadn't been here at all other than playing. And when I have played, it's been with COVID and everything. So just excited for the city to open back up and, you know, be able to, like Daniel mentioned, see some of the memorials, you know, take a tour, walk around, just, you know, see the White House up close, 
um, and just to get that whole aspect of the uh, of the culture and everything and then enjoy the things of the city, you know, be able to maybe catch a Nationals game or Capitals game or whatnot and um, see some different sports things going on. So definitely excited to explore as, as things start to open back up. Well, it is a cool place and we're so glad to have you here. And the next question has to do with uh, our food. And I don't know if, it, if it's a, you've had a chance even to sample this because it's a, a DC delicacy. So you guys were obviously just in Chicago. So Daniel, I'll start with you. Uh, if you had to keep one, deep dish pizza or mumbo sauce? Mumbo sauce is a DC thing. So do you even have you even tried it before? I haven't had mumbo sauce yet, so you're probably gonna have to say that question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is for the uh, the sequel of, of Daniel and Chandler get together. Chandler, <laughs> you like the yeah. dish? You're just in Chicago. Daniel, do you like it? Uh, the dish. You like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm a, I'm a big pizza guy anyway, so any type of pizza I'm going to eat. So a deep dish, that was just right on my alley, especially when like, I first got there. Yeah, so I couldn't wait to get it. <laughs> yeah, Chicago, you can put on a lot of weight there. The good eating town. Uh, Chandler, deep dish pizza, uh, any thoughts on mumbo sauce? Yeah, I mean, I'm picking mumbo sauce, and I haven't even had it just because I hate deep dish pizza. <laughs> and people always look at me crazy when I say that when I'm from, you know, being in Chicago. But it just feels like you just, you know, I had it one time the first time I got there and it was like, I felt sick after, yeah. you know, you're eating it with a fork and a knife and it's like, is this a pizza or is this, you know, a, a cake? Yeah. And it's just a lot going on. So for me, I, I don't even know what mumbo sauce is, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm picking it. I'm picking it for sure. Yeah. Just don't put mumbo sauce on cereal, but it, it is, it is good. It's a, it's a, a DC uh, uh, delicacy. And you're right about the, the deep dish pizza. I don't think it's a good pregame meal to put you to sleep in a half hour. That's usually yeah, no, the way it works. Uh, a little bit about each of you, Daniel Gafford, uh, Elder, El Dorado, Arkansas, right? That's where you're from? Yeah. <laughs> what, take us there. What, 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 uh, what do you take with you from El Dorado, Arkansas as you travel the world now? Um, really, <laughs> I don't even think that there's, you know, I was anything that I could take from it. Just, it was just like a, a hard work ethic, to be honest, because, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a decent sized town. You know, we got our own thing that, we do down there, but other than that, um, you know, it's just, it's going from like a good city to somewhat, there's like a lot of stuff closing down and whatnot. So I really can't even really just too much explain, you know, everything. Cause it's been a minute since I've been down there. The last time I was down there, I had my mom move back, but um, you know, it's just, it's a great city. They call it the dog pound, uh, <laughs> you know, Why so is I, that? I, uh, I just, it's just like, you know, it's just really just like a bunch of people that, really are like in the sports down there, you know, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, anything like that. So really just every time, you know, when we get, you know, guys coming out of sports or anything like that, we, we they always put the narrative of them, you know, being dogs and stuff because of how hard they work, certain things like that. So I kind of like really just take that with me because, you know, it's a dog pound. So, I mean, I, I came out the dog pound, you know, but I always, I got the dog inside of me still. So yeah. Yeah. And you got the biggest bark and you're in the NBA yeah. from the dog pound. <laughs> And real quick, did I, I, the internet's a dangerous place. Did I read that right? You were in a marching band? You were in the marching band at one point? Yes, I was. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you I could was, do everything. I, uh, just really in the band in general. I played three different variations of the clarinet, and I played a uh, marching band. I played the bass drum in marching band. Okay, Dan, I see you. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, can you play an instrument? Huh? No, 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 no. Oh. I tried. I tried to. I tried to uh, pick up the acoustic guitar in quarantine, and it lasted for about a week. I didn't realize how hard it was. Humbled myself real quick. I thought I was a lot more talented than I was. See, I was trying to get a band together, Daniel and ja uh, Chandler, and see if we could, <laughs> we could have that happen. Mission Viejo, California. Uh, it's. It sounds nice, and I've been there. It is nice. Uh, California guy, what do you take out of Mission Viejo around the world? Yeah, yeah. I mean. Um, it's, it's kind of cool because there's not a lot of, um, you know, professional athletes per se, especially in the basketball world, you know, from Mission Viejo. Um, uh, it's a very successful, you know, sports town in, in high school. And they put a lot of my, my uh, high school puts a lot of um, division one athletes, you know, all around the country, but at the professional level, you know, there's kind of a sense of pride because you don't hear of a lot from, from um, South Orange County. You know, obviously, Russ being from L.A., which is su Southern California, and, and uh, Clay Thompson even from uh, right around my block. But 
not not many of us you know so there's a sense of pride you kind of take with you and um you know you you definitely want to share that with people where you're from because you know it's not like the big the big places that put a lot of uh you know people in the league you know so we've kind of got that that sense of pride for sure well we have a sense of pride of having both of you with the washington wizards uh, chandler and daniel i can't thank you enough for, for spending some time with us and and we look forward to daniel you, you getting healthy do you, do you know when you're coming back or do you still it's day to day we'll see uh i said i don't have an official date yet but it's still day to day i'm really just just really taking my time with this one because last time that I actually did this in Chicago. I did it in Toronto game. I actually tried to play on it afterwards, and I kind of extended my extended the length of the time that I was out. So I'm just really just trying to be patient with this. No, nope. again, Daniel Chandler, great to be with you. Chandler, we'll get you mumbo sauce on something. Daniel, we'll get you a good pizza, whatever pizza you want. And we thank everyone in the our DC 12 Club members for joining us in the DC 12 Clubhouse. Can't say enough uh, thank yous for your support as we continue on this journey together now with Chandler Hutchison and Daniel Gafford with the Washington Wizards.